Hi. So this week we are moving from lesson two, where you wrote a um, outline with identifying three experiences that you wanted to share in your essay, your This I Believe essay, and turning it into a full-fledged rough draft. So we're going to take a moment and talk about some suggestions for how to do that. And I also wanted to show you my model that I wrote so that you could use that maybe as a guide. You also have examples in your book and online that you can follow to kind of help give you some ideas about what kind of essay we're producing for this first paper. So let me go ahead and switch over so that you can see my screen. Um, so this is the directions, remember, for lesson three discussion, the This I Believe round uh, second round rough draft. And if you will notice, um, I have posted up my model. Good job, Lisa, on already getting your uh, essay completed, your rough draft done and posted. Um, Lisa is ahead of me. Um, but I wrote my model this afternoon and I wanted to share it with you and give you some feedback on some suggestions and recommendations for improving or developing your rough draft. Um, some, some tips that you might think about. Um, identify a narrative coherence. So just like you would write a story or, or tell a, a narrative for your audience, you want to do that for this essay too. Um, one of the most common comments that I wrote on the rough drafts that I reviewed last week and on Monday was that you want to start thinking about having a narrative coherence, that we're moving from having three separate experiences into one cohesive unit. Think about stories that you've written or read where you have the rising action the introduction, the rising action, the climax, and the falling action, you want that also in your This I Believe essay. It makes for a much more pleasurable, rewarding, um, insightful experience for your readers. You also wanna think about how you could develop your essay. So imagine or consider your unfamiliar audience. I, I don't know you personally beyond the scope of this class, your classmates may not be very familiar with you because you've never been in classes together. Or maybe if you did go to the same high school and you knew each other, maybe you don't know this particular experience or this uh, creed or philosophy that you have and why. And so that means you'll need to assume an unfamiliar reader. Set the stage for them. Think about um, you know, uh, when did you have this belief, right? Uh, where were you? Who was in this narrative? If you'll notice, my example is primarily focused on my father and how his experiences informed my own This I Believe essay. So think about, you know, um, how old were you? Where did this occur? Uh, what were you doing at the time? Why is this belief important? How does your experience connect to others' experiences? Also, you might think about the cultural or social, economic, political beliefs that this essay illustrates. Um, think about maybe why it's important. Why is it important that you share this information with other people? Consider also your voice or your tone. What kind of tone do you want to project? What is the, the narrative voice in this essay? So for example, um, you know, your essay doesn't need to be heartwarming or sad. Um, but it does need to be authentic. It needs to be honest. Try to avoid editorializing too much or proselytizing. You know, think about your audience believes you. We already believe you. We already agree with you. So you're not working to try and kind of beat us over the head with it. Or your job in this essay isn't necessarily to... Um, you know, kind of come out swinging, being defensive. Instead, think about the tone that you want to project um, and, and presenting an authentic, honest tone. That means that maybe you avoid um, sen sentences that start with you um, or we, and instead focus on the I. Um, you know, frame it all in terms of your experiences. Now, I did this a little bit differently um, in my essay, and we'll talk about that here. Not that I don't, I don't think mine is wrong. It's just a different approach. Um, and then frame your essay in a way that emphasizes what you believe rather than what you don't. So again, keep coming back to a positive approach to this assignment. It's not necessarily saying, you know, that so-and-so is wrong or that um, something was terrible or awful, but rather what is the, for lack of a kind of, for you know, maybe just to be a little cliche, what's the silver lining here? What's the takeaway 
or I like to call sometimes the so what here in this narrative. So let's look at mine as an example. So I linked here a Google uh, Doc that you can leave comments on. So I appreciate any feedback that you have to offer me. Um, writing is just as hard for me as it is for you. Um, I struggle with it too. And so I wrote this, I always appreciate feedback. I'm gonna zoom in just so you could see a little bit better. All right, let's take off this outline part. So this also is a little bit different than the outline that I proposed in lesson two. As I was writing this essay, if I were to write the essay that I proposed last week, it would have probably been much longer than the page requirements. Um, we don't want this to be, this isn't, you know, a three or four or five page paper. This is about 500 words. So you don't want to go on too long. And if I wrote the essay that I proposed last week, it would have been much too long. So what I did was I, I kind of shrunk it down a little bit. I cut out some of what I had planned to write about and didn't include that in this one. And that's okay too. That's why we, we write early. As I said in my post, we write early and we revise often. So it gives you that time to do that. So my creed or my this I believe is that we are all doing the best we can. So one of my first memories is riding in the backseat of our family's Oldsmobile station wagon through Southern New Mexico along I-10. We were somewhere between Deming and Lordsburg and Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton were singing about islands in a stream. My mother, my sister, and I were returning home to Sierra Vista, Arizona after visiting my father at the VA hospital in El Paso. Oh, that should say El Paso, Texas, not New Mexico. Look at that, I can revise on the spot. I still remember watching him with the other men all sitting outside at an old stone patio table in the desert sun, smoking cigarettes in faded blue hospital pajamas. I was five years old, and this was the first time that my father was hospitalized for a PTSD-induced mental breakdown. So what I'm trying to do in this first introduction is set the stage. This is my introduction to the essay. Kind of giving you a, a sense of place, of time. You knew, if, if you're familiar with Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers, you have an idea of what year this might be, somewhere in the mid-1980s. Um, you know that this, hap this memory starts for me um, in the, in the backseat of my mother's car. Um, I can tell you it was one of those Oldsmobile station wagons that had like the wood paneling on the side. Um, and my sister and I would lay down and play in the very, very back, the way back that they would call it. So to blame the mental breakdown on his service in Vietnam would be a simplistic explanation of his mental health struggles. After all, my father only joined the Navy, lying about his age at 17, to escape a physically abusive, mentally ill mother and neglectful father. I'm sure that months in the South China Sea seemed a respite to my dad, who'd been left by my grandfather in a Mexican jail at 15 years old after my dad ran away from home. His older brother had recently died following a routine tonsillectomy, and his mother had reminded him often that the wrong child had died. But it was now the 1980s, and people did not understand the nuances of PTSD and anxiety. So my father did the best that he could. He talked to a shrink for a few days, he took his prescribed medication, and he came home. So in, in there, in that paragraph, I'm trying to also kind of that rising action. I've introduced this, the narrative, and now we're kind of doing this rising action where you're getting more information about my father and his childhood and what would lead to him to um, needing to be um, hospitalized for PTSD-induced anxiety and a mental breakdown. Um, I also, if you'll notice right here, I'm kind of prefacing, I'm not so much saying like this is my, this is what I believe, but if you'll notice I'm using those keyword repetition here. I'm kind of at the end of that paragraph coming back to that keyword repetition the best that he could. So this pattern repeated itself for several years until my father retired from the military, and over the next 26 years, his mental health improved. Some days were better than others, but he was happy as a farmer and a grandfather. Things changed dramatically after he was diagnosed with cancer. His, the exertion from fighting cancer, along with the unintended side effects of his medication, led to another mental breakdown. 
and while I understood that my father needed to be involuntarily hospitalized for his and my mother's safety, I was doing the best I could to protect him despite the guilt and shame that I felt from seeing a terminally ill man restrained in a hospital bed because he wanted to smother his wife in her sleep. And if you'll notice that keyword repetition, this time it's me, I was doing the best that I could. My father stabilized, was released, and returned home to the farm where he died several months later from lung cancer, a cancer that might have been caused by the cigarettes he chain smoked at the kitchen table to calm his nerves, the asbestos he was exposed to by a military that he joined to escape his abusive parents, or the Agent Orange dropped over his head in Vietnam in some unwinnable war. My dad was complicated and he was not always a very good parent. His PTSD left him angry, scared, and emotionally volatile. But he was broken in a way that few could understand or empathize. So my father tried to be the best father he, could, he was capable of being, and in doing so, he taught me the most important lesson of all. We are all just doing the best that we can. So that is my This I Believe essay. Um, if you'll notice that kind of keyword repetition, I try to kind of have that rising action, the crescendo coming um, when my father passed away, and then the falling action about what I learned, you know, through his life. Um, I don't think it's done. I'm not entirely finished with it. Um, I'm not, I, I think I have a couple of places where it might be a little, like, I need to make sure it's clear that it's my father. Um, I'm thinking I might have a verb I need to change out here or there. Um, I'm also a little, I don't know, maybe I think I want to maybe add another sentence or two here towards the end, because I don't know if I've really conveyed to my reader that my dad was a good man. Like he wasn't all terrible. He was a good man. And I think that by focusing so much on the negative, I'm not really conveying that. So that's what I'm going to work on next week. So after I finish and turn this in to you guys to review, next week's lesson is when we're finishing it up uh, for submission. I'm going to spend a little bit of time maybe adding a few sentences here towards the end. I'm not going to go too long because it's already kind of at the page length requirement. Uh, so I don't want to go too far down that road. And we're also winding things down. But I'm not exactly happy with where it's at yet. I have a, a few things that I want to tinker with. But I did want to give you an example so that you could look at some ideas to, to work on. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and let me know. All right, I'll be online. I'm here for you. And I look forward to reading your essays.